Hello and welcome to Tim Newton Today. A sad day as Britain grieves and witnesses the loss of Queen Elizabeth II. We'll have a look at how the media has covered that story around the world. And we'd like to thank our sponsors Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description and inviting you to join me, perhaps if you've got time, tomorrow we can discuss all the things happening this week in the news. That'll be at 9am Thai time Saturday. Good morning friends and a sad day as we acknowledge the passing of Queen Elizabeth II and the ascension to the throne of King Charles III. Now of course it's a very sad day for Britons, the Commonwealth and the rest of the world as we acknowledge the passing of a remarkable lady who spent 70 years dedicated to her duty as the Queen of England. Uh, let's see how the media has covered the story. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen, as simple as that on the BBC. King Charles leads tributes to cherished Queen. Queen Elizabeth II plans for her lying in state and a funeral. And uh, some lots of pictures, of course. Royal family tree and the line of succession. Uh, also covered by The Guardian, King Charles III expresses greatest sadness upon the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, and a lot of other stories there uh, supporting that particular story. And you can see right in the middle of London, in uh, painted large on a huge LED s- screen, a uh, beautiful picture there of Her Majesty the Queen. And the Daily Mirror has got a beautiful portrait there of the Queen. Lots of photos. Thank you, Mum, for everything. Emotional Brits flock to Buckingham Palace and gather at the gates as the UK reacts to death of our beloved Queen, aged 96. The Washington Post. uh, Queen Elizabeth II dies at 96 for seven decades, a symbol of stability in Britain and on the world stage. CNN has done quite an extensive coverage. Queen Elizabeth dead at 96. Tearful crowds gathered after Britain's longest-serving monarch died peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. And a side story there, King Charles III. What can the world expect from Britain's new monarch? And that, of course, is a big question. King Charles III, not a young man, but has had a long time to prepare for his time on the throne. His son, William, will at some stage in the next few years, we imagine, be crowned the Prince of Wales, which makes him officially the heir to the British throne. Uh, Some more coverage, and this one from USA Today. Elizabeth II dies. Queen was 96. Her son, King Charles III, takes the throne. And the Straits Times there covering the story. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest-serving monarch, dies aged 96 after a 70-year reign. Uh, Some additional stories. Elizabeth the Queen, who moved with a changing world. And a loss for us all world leaders pay tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. And this story from the Australian.com.au, uh, the Murdoch paper, the National Daily, Queen Elizabeth II dies aged 96, a life devoted to service, Queen Elizabeth II. And more closer to home, Queen Elizabeth II dies, the story there featured in the Bangkok Post. And also Thai PBS World has done a few stories, including this one, Mournful, God Save the Queen, rings out at Buckingham Palace. And you can see there the official announcement being posted to the Buckingham Palace gate. The situation did make me a little bit interested to know is who are the longest serving monarchs in the world? I thought that Queen Elizabeth II might be the longest serving monarch, but in fact it's Louis XIV from France who served 72 years, 110 days. Queen Elizabeth II, 70 years and 214 days. And this one, King Pumipon. Uh, Rama IX served on the Thai throne for 70 years and 126 days. So tributes will ring out around the world for the next weeks and months over the passing of this great lady. Uh, New era for Britain now as they move into the era of King Charles III. Time to move on to some other stories. (laughs) 
You're watching TNT. It's the last day of the week. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, uh, tomorrow, if you're around around about 9 a.m. Saturday, Thai time, we can have a live chat, just you and me, and we can thrash out uh, the stories that have happened during the week. And you might have some questions. Hopefully, I might have some intelligent answers. That's tomorrow. In the meantime, let's uh, go to a local story and build to end the rights of senators in the selection of Thailand's Prime Minister ditched by Parliament, this story in uh, Thai PBS World. Now, the situation is that uh, to choose a Prime Minister, if no one party gets 50% of the vote plus one, then the Thai Parliament gets to vote on the Prime Minister. Each party puts up a Prime Ministerial candidate and then a joint sitting of Parliament decides who that Prime Minister is. Now, the Senate is hand-picked. And they've got 250 votes, the lower house some 500 members, so 750 in total. Let's have a look at some of the maths in this story. Uh, The bill, initiated by former election commissioner and NGOs, seconded by more than 50,000 people, received 356 votes from senators and MPs at their joint meeting on Wednesday, just short of the 364 minimum required for the passage of the bill. 102 MPs and 151 senators voted against the bill, while 45 senators and 5 MPs abstained. Certainly wasn't a Certainly not a huge margin there. Let's uh, see some of the politics behind this particular vote. We go down to the bottom of this page. Most Palang Pracharat Party MPs, the core government party, and those from smaller parties voted against the four bills, while other coalition partners, such as the Democrat and Bumjai Thai parties, voted with the opposition in support of the four bills. So not everybody in the coalition wanting the Senate to be involved in the election of a prime minister in Thailand in the future. Of course, those 250 votes stacked well against the opposition parties and supporting the army, the Prayut uh, supporters and the conservative sections of the Thai government. To our next story, and the Bangkok Post says that heavy downpours, high tide prompt flood alert in capital. They've got a bit of a perfect storm. Uh, Yes, not just a play on words, on the way with floodwaters coming down the Chao Phraya, uh, heavy rain in Bangkok and a high tide all at the same time. The story from the Bangkok Post says that Bangkok has raised its flood alert level with heavy rain expected to fall until Saturday, adding to a huge volume of runoff continuing to flow from upstream. The uh, Bangkok governor adding that a trough is expected to bring more rain to the city until the weekend. Just checking the radar today and well happy to report that uh, doesn't seem to be any rain on the radar at all this morning. But they are expecting some rain tonight and tomorrow. So if you're up in Bangkok, uh, please be careful. But good to report there that checking the radar this morning, no rain, just a few clouds there coming in from the, uh, the southeast. But Bangkok, at least for now, looks clear. It's the Friday program on TNT. Great to have you with us. Let's uh, check more to do with the weather. This story from The Nation, who have got a new layout, by the way. Heavy rain over Suwanapum forces Emirates A380 to land at Don Mung. Now, that in itself uh, is an interesting story, but there's more to it. Let's find out the details. A heavy downpour on Wednesday night prompted an Emirates airline Airbus a380, they're the double-decker planes, to divert to Don Mung International Airport, the first time the world's largest passenger jet was forced to land at Bangkok's secondary airport. And so uh, it was an, explained as an extraordinary landing of flight EK363 and reported that they made it safely at Don Mung's Western 21R runway 940 at night. They eventually made their way to Suwanapum Airport at 8 minutes past 1 a.m. on Thursday. So the fourth paragraph here I found quite interesting. Aero Thai said the flight originated from Guangzhou. 
in China, southern China, and was scheduled to land at Sawanapum, but a heavy shower kept the plane from landing and it had to circle over Sawanapum for more than 50 minutes. Uh, so that's interesting. I didn't know that Emirates was flying out of Guangzhou into Bangkok. It's probably one of their... They do quite a few of these these triangle flights. For example, they... Uh, maybe not now, but they used to fly from Dubai into Phuket, Phuket to Bangkok, pick up some customers there and then back to Dubai. Maybe this is what they're doing with this uh, Guangzhou flight. I'll have to have a, a further look into it, but I was quite surprised to see that flight coming out of China. And down the bottom in that story, several other flights also requested permission to divert to either Domlang or Utupau International Airport. That's down in Rayong near Pattaya on Wednesday night. Interesting story there. Uh, burning warehouse collapsed on Bangkok firefighters, injuring seven. This story from coconuts.co. And uh, interesting animation they have there on their, uh, their front page as well. So some new formats coming up on the online publications. This story says that seven firefighters were injured last night when the wall of a burning warehouse fell upon them as they tried to extinguish a raging fire in the riverside district of Ratborana. And all seven were taken to a nearby hospital. It took about two hours to put out the fire. Glad to report there that uh, no one died. To our next story, and just a bit of a reminder, and I'll try and post this uh, somewhere so that you can see it as a bit of a reminder. These are the new traffic laws, and it goes through the new penalties of failing to wear a seatbelt, reminding you that you have to wear a seat belt in the front and the back seat in cars up to seven passengers now a maximum fine of 2000 baht speed limit violation 4000 baht failing to stop at a red light 4000 baht all the way down to drunk driving offenses uh, and it's graded there from fines of 5000 up to 100,000 reckless driving that endangers others a fine of up to 20000 baht and or a one-year imprisonment. So just a reminder there that all these fines have gone up. I think the police have been instructed to have a grace period of some two to three months, and then it might get uh, deadly serious after that. So, of course, having the fines is one thing. Enforcing them is another. And to uh, our next story here, and this from the South China Morning Post, it's an opinion piece, and it says that Malaysia is right, Myanmar is in crisis, its people are dying and ASEAN must stop dithering. And the main points of this story, more than 2,000 confirmed civilian deaths have been recorded in Myanmar since the junta seized power in last year's military coup. And the writer, Joseph, there asks the question, how many more must die before ASEAN heeds Mal Malaysia's call and acts with some sense of urgency? Noting that the Malaysian foreign minister the other day really got stuck into ASEAN and their lack of action over the Myanmar problem. Right, to uh, a final good story today from Thai PBS World. Thai TikToker builds following with tips on frugal living and uh, the story says that a Thai TikToker's ti a Thai TikToker's tips whew, on grocery shopping on a budget of just 4000 baht a month that's around US $109 is attracting thousands of followers amid a global food crisis as the Southeast Asian nation grapples with its highest inflation in more than a decade so 4,000 baht for an entire month of shopping. That's a pretty tight budget, but uh, interesting to see that they've been cover covering the story. It originally came out of Reuters, and it's also been covered uh, in US news. People, of course, uh, who subscribe to the Reuters feeds have taken that story. So that story's made it all the way to US publications. Thai TikToker builds following the tips on frugal living. So with that, I thank you very much for watching today. Friday, the last day of the week, acknowledging the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. I do look forward to seeing you tomorrow live. If you've got time, 9 a.m. Thai time, I'm going to put a posting up on the community section of our YouTube channel so that you can throw some questions or some comments in there, and I'll do my best to address them. In the meantime, have a fantastic Friday, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.